the seven steps to starting an online business. There has never been a better opportunity to start an online business and escape the rat race than there is right now. We have entered a new era, an era of online entrepreneurship, where people can build wealth from the comfort of their own home. With 20 years of online business experience under my belt, I can confidently tell you it's never been easier to launch an online business than it is right now. Now you might think, why should I listen to this YouTuber with such low subs? Well, that's a valid question, as this channel has been simmering on the back burner for me for the last seven years. But in that time, I have been building a premium training course business. And those courses have been enrolled in over 300,000 times. Now you can verify that with a quick online search for my name. And I tell you this so that I can assure you that this is not my first rodeo. This is not another let's start a YouTube channel on making money type venture. This channel is about helping entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs train to be successful entrepreneurs. Two decades ago when I embarked on my entrepreneurial journey, online business was a radical, often dismissed concept. Today, many still believe it's a pipe dream especially when starting a business on a shoestring budget. But I'm here to debunk that myth. Over these 20 years of running multiple different types of online businesses, I've identified core principles that make or break a business. In this video, I will guide you through the seven steps that you need to take grounded in real world experience and proven principles to help you launch your very own online business. Your journey to become a successful online entrepreneur starts here. Here are the seven steps we will be discussing. Step one, interest. Step two, niche. Step three, expertise. Step four, structure. Step five, time. Step six, create. And step seven, diligence. We're going to use a YouTube video production business as an example for this video but the same principles of building this business out can apply to any other type of online business as the steps are exactly the same. The reason I chose a YouTube video production business is because that type of business right now, in my opinion, has the greatest potential, is one of the easiest to start, easiest to monetize, and it costs very little money to get going. Instagram and TikTok have very few monetization options in comparison. You cannot use them for affiliate marketing and you cannot use them to promote your own products in any meaningful way. This is why YouTube is still king. So let's go through these steps one by one. Step one, interest. Discover your interests and determine your content category. The first step in establishing an online business is a period of introspection. You must take stock of your interests and areas of expertise. It's crucial to choose a field that genuinely resonates with you, whether you are already an expert in that area or are strongly motivated to become one. Creating a business that spans over years requires a deep commitment to what you're producing. Many budding entrepreneurs make the mistake of venturing into areas simply because they've proven profitable for others. This approach often leads to boredom or stress as they don't genuinely enjoy the business's focus. So that is why you need to choose a niche that aligns with your interests, not just the success stories of other people. Once you've pinpointed your interest areas, it's time to identify the category of content you'll be delivering. Typically, online content especially video content, falls into one of these three categories. Educational content, entertainment content, news content. Your business may incorporate elements from each category, but it's crucial to determine your primary category. This distinction will help guide your content creation and its style, whilst also helping to maintain consistency and focus throughout your business venture. 
So using this simple approach means you'll be well equipped to build a business that not only resonates with you, but also has the potential to captivate an online audience who have the same passion as you do for your topic. And that passion is important. It will come through in your content and it will resonate with your audience who will then support the channel with their own passion. And it is your passion and the audience's passion combined that grows a successful business. So here's an example of step one. You're an animal lover, always interested in learning more about different types of pets. You had experience with different pets, but have found you have a specific interest in cats. This is something you are passionate about. This is something you dedicate time to. You're always watching cat videos online. You're always interested in stories about cats. If you see a cat walking down the road, you want to stroke it. Maybe you already have a bunch of cats. This then means this becomes something you can dedicate time to. This is something that you know other people are also passionate about. That means that this is something you can monetize. Now, here's a quick note. It is okay to monetize your passion. There is nothing free in this world. If you are creating a video that is costing you time and your time is worth money, you have a right to earn from your labor. Step two, niche. Define your niche. The second step in building an online business involves pinpointing the niche you're going to target initially. When starting, it's beneficial to focus on a specific subset of your primary subject matter, and this is often referred to as niching down. As your business expands, you can broaden your scope back up to encompass broader, more related subjects, but at the beginning, you need to niche down. Consider, for example, you want to create a pets-focused channel. You might first niche down to cats and then niche down further to focus specifically on Siamese cats. The reason for being this specific is that in the beginning, you do not need a large number of followers or subscribers, but you do need a dedicated, engaged audience. This audience will consistently consume your content due to their intense interest or personal identification with the topic. The more actively engaged your viewers are, the quicker the search engine algorithms will pick up your content. And this is because all online algorithms prioritize social proof signals, meaning they measure the amount of engagement you are getting on your content. So knowing this means you need to generate social proof by being hyper-targeted on a highly engaged audience who will naturally comment, like, and generally engage with your content. Now, ideally, your niche should be high in demand, but low in supply. In other words, plenty of people are interested in it, but few content creators are focusing on it or are not delivering good quality content. This is important. Sometimes you can get into a saturated niche by delivering better quality content than what is currently available. I have done this with my training business. I have created courses on social media marketing and sales, and they've become some of the best selling courses on the internet just by focusing on creating high quality content that really solves people's problems. So the question I will ask myself when creating more content is, can I do this better than someone else? If I can, and if I can communicate that through the quality to the potential audience, I can earn income through that attitude and by creating processes that enable me to deliver better quality content. Now, how can you spot an underserved niche? You can gauge this by asking questions about your potential niche, searching for them online, and seeing if there's ample content answering those questions. If there's a lot of interest, if you're seeing other people asking these questions, but there's scarce good quality content to answer those questions with, or there's content in a format like a blog or a Quora post, or a post on Reddit, but there's no video, you have probably found a winning niche. Now, part of this step also involves determining the most appropriate video platform for your niche. 
while YouTube is considered, and I consider it the king due to its extensive monetization options, it is important to remember that success is possible on other platforms too. It is just harder to monetize there. Now, a quick note. Some people want to build a website first and then start creating their digital products. But I would generally discourage that. You can leverage existing platforms like YouTube and TikTok and Instagram with their built-in marketing systems to gain some rapid social proof. What this does as well, it allows you to test your product before you start investing thousands of pounds into building a website or hundreds of hours of developing your own website. You don't need a website just yet. That comes when you have really started taking off and you have proven the success of your product. So here's an example. As you explore your interest in cats, you realize that the world of feline companions is vast. There are many breeds, each with its own distinct characteristics. Over time, you notice your particular interest in Siamese cats. You're fascinated by their social, intelligent, and slightly demanding behavior. So you then have a look at the different platforms. And you might notice, for instance, there is not much long-form content on Siamese cats, for example, on YouTube. I don't know if there is or not. I'm just using that as an example in this video. So you go there or you notice there is content, but you have a better perspective on the cats to offer, or maybe a different approach that will appeal to Siamese cat owners. You realize that you can compete on that channel for that content and for those viewers. Now, what's important to understand as well is that people are interested in an area like Siamese cats. They will watch many people so sometimes it doesn't even matter that there's other people. Some people are so hungry for their passion and interest, they will consume everything they can get. So if it doesn't look like there's much in general, or there is some good quality stuff, but there's not much of it, there's still an opportunity if the community around that interest is big enough. Step three, expertise. Cultivate your expertise. The third step involves cultivating and expanding your expertise in your chosen niche. It's a common mistake to assume you know everything about your interest, but there's always more to learn. Others in your field will have knowledge and experiences that you haven't yet gained. To truly thrive in your online business, you must strive to become the definitive expert in your niche. Immerse yourself completely in your chosen subject. Watch read and absorb all the relevant information you can find. Become obsessed with your subject. One of the things you can do, for instance, is when you're watching a YouTube video on your subject, go and read all the comments, find products on Amazon, read the reviews, dig down, try and find and understand what everybody is saying about your area of interest, not just the content creators. You'll often get really, really good ideas in the comments, in reviews, to spark an idea, to create a piece of content from. Now, your deep dive into the field will help you identify the niches to target. By studying successful individuals or businesses in your sector or related ones, you can begin to figure out which topics or video content yielded the most results. So if you find someone who's got a channel that's very similar to what you're doing, Go and see what their top performing videos were. Go through their video feed, figure out what worked and what didn't work. And that's going to help you save time because you can focus on subjects that people are really interested in. Identifying the most viewed topics becomes a key guide to what content you should be creating. Consume as much content as you can about the business model you're planning to adopt and learn from those who have already achieved success. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Well, how deep should your knowledge go? The aim is to become world-class in your field, to strive for the summit of expertise. And even if you reach only halfway to the peak of the summit of that expertise, you'll still be knowledgeable enough to guide others who are looking to climb up from the very bottom of the mountain. One lesson I learned from when I was in the antiques trade, I used to buy and sell antiques and sell them online and ship them all over the world. I did that for 12 years. And this lesson applies universally to all businesses. The person with the most knowledge 
in any business situation tends to earn the most. The more knowledge you have, the more people will treat you as an authority and the more willing they will be to give you their money in exchange for the information you provide and the products you sell. In essence, cultivating expertise paves the path to success. People gravitate to the expert in any area of life. Whenever you are looking to learn something online, what do you do? You go and try and find an expert. You want to learn from the expert. So you have to become the expert and it's much easier than you think it is because not many people actually think like that. So it is quite easy, relatively easy, if you're willing to study your sector and learn to gain that level of expertise, which then develops trust and then enables people to buy from you. So let's have a look at an example. Now you have identified your specific niche, Siamese cats, you need to become an expert in this field. So you delve into all things Siamese cats. You research their history, care needs, personality traits, common health issues, and everything else related to them. You find every video, you watch every documentary, you read every book, you read every comment and every video until you are an expert in Siamese cats. You might decide to adopt a Siamese kitten yourself if you haven't already got one and film your journey with that cat as it grows. As you gain more knowledge and experience, you become the authority on Siamese cats and you keep exploring the subject at every opportunity, watching other people's videos, keeping up to date with the whole world of Siamese cats and that way you stay on top of your game. Now if you are finding this video useful and you want to take a deeper dive into all aspects of entrepreneurship then check out this special offer I have for you. You can access my Business Buddies training community which has 58 hours of condensed premium training and that includes six best-selling masterclass courses that will help you build your own business fast. And you will also have access to my own personal support in my private community. My courses have been taken by 300,000 plus students from all corners of the world. So these are tried and tested and extremely popular courses. And you can save over 50% on the normal price right now by using the coupon link below. You're not going to get a better deal anywhere else. So check that out in the description. Step four, structure. Establish a basic infrastructure. The fourth step is setting up a business structure for your online business. To do this, you'll need to identify the fundamental resources and equipment that you need that your specific business requires. For example, if you're venturing into a video business, you'll need a smartphone, basic lighting, a simple microphone, and a suitable recording space to get going. It's crucial not to get carried away and to spend lots of money on high-end equipment at this early stage. Start with what you have and then gradually upgrade as your business grows. Fancy equipment doesn't guarantee success. It's your content and delivery that truly matter. If there is additional equipment that you need but don't currently have, your next task is to figure out how to acquire that equipment. It's essential to remember at this point that borrowing money to fund your business will erode future profits and should be avoided at all costs. Instead, consider simplifying your existing expenditure to accommodate these new expenses for your business. If that's not feasible, brainstorm other ways to generate extra cash you might have to do a little bit of part-time work or maybe you've got unused items around your house that you can sell online that will pay for your equipment with cash and also consider buy good quality used equipment to save a lot of money at the beginning. Now having a dedicated recording space or a mini studio that's set up and ready to use at all times is a must. This could be in your bedroom, it could be in a spare room, even in an outbuilding. This approach reduces friction. It makes it easier for you to produce content regularly as you can just hit record for every new video you make and you don't have to drag all of your equipment out, set it up every time. That is the friction that can stop you doing what needs to be done. Not only does this drive efficiency, but it also fosters a sense of commitment and diligence, pushing you to stay consistent in your business. In essence, 
This step is about preparing the ground for your online business to flourish in. By setting up a basic yet effective infrastructure, you are paving the way for your business's growth and your business's sustainability. So let's have a look at an example. Now that you have some really good knowledge about Siamese cats, you've done your research, it's time to start building your YouTube channel structure. Questions you might ask yourself, are you going to film your cats? Maybe you're going to use stock footage. Is that stock footage available online? How are you going to film and edit your videos? What software and equipment do you have to start with? Where will you film? Do you have a room that you can use? Can you adapt a room that you are already using for something else? This is a stage where you figure all of that out and solve those problems. Step five, time. Time allocation. The fifth step is to critically assess your time management and figure out where you'll find the time to build your business. Your time indeed is your greatest asset. It's your key to constructing a successful business without incurring hefty expenses. So essentially what that means is that you can use your time You don't need to use money to gradually construct your business. However, to create time for your business, you're going to have to take that from other activities you're currently engaged in. Now, entertainment often occupies a substantial chunk of people's daily routine. This is typically where you can reclaim some time for your business. For instance, if you currently spend about four hours each evening watching entertainment, watching YouTube, watching Netflix, you could consider trimming that down to just one hour before you go to sleep for relaxation. And this reorganization suddenly leaves you with three additional hours each day to invest in your business. Now, three hours a day might not seem like much, but it's ample time to build a part-time business if you use your time efficiently. As an example, one of my businesses runs successfully on about two hours of work that I put in and my wife puts in between us together every week. And from that, we generate a healthy full-time income. Now, it did require a heavy time investment at the beginning, but now it delivers income for very little time cost. All I'm doing with that business is just basic level maintenance. I tell you this because this illustrates how valuable time can be when you focus on creating assets that can create income. The objective here is to use your time to create a product or piece of content that generates recurring revenue. In other words, you can make something, but you can monetize that thing you made thousands of times. So if you make a video on YouTube and it is monetized, you can earn ad revenue off of that video. So every time someone watches your video, you can earn a small commission. You could also create print-on-demand products featuring your cat or featuring Siamese cats and promoting them in your videos. Now you have a product to sell. Or maybe you're using some products you bought off of Amazon in your video. Maybe you have a special cat feeder. Now you can link to them in your description and comments with an Amazon affiliate link. And now you're going to earn commission every time someone clicks on that link, goes onto Amazon, buys that product or anything else on that shopping trip in that category. Or maybe you have a Siamese cat membership community, a website where people pay a monthly subscription to be a part of that. Now you can monetize that. Because the video is sitting there and people can find that video, that video then becomes an asset that generates income over and over again. And that's the value of creating assets. This approach allows you to multiply the value of your time exponentially. The key to unlocking this potential is the strategic allocation and effective management of your time in the first place. So instead of binge watching some Netflix show, and we've all done it, think about using that time to generate some wealth for yourself. Eventually, you will gain all that time back and more. Invest the time in the beginning so that you can get your time back in the end. And this is how you compound the value of your time. So let's have a look at an example. As you delve deeper into your pet channel, focusing on Siamese cash, you must consider the time you have available for this endeavor. For instance, let's say you have a full-time job and you can only dedicate evenings and weekends to your YouTube channel. This will affect how often you can publish content, 
respond to comments, engage with your audience on how much time you can invest in research and production. In the context of our Siamese Cats channel, creating a single video might involve multiple steps like researching the topic, script writing, shooting, editing, and post-production. If your topic for a week is the history and origins of Siamese cats, you might spend Monday evening on research, Tuesday evening on script writing, Wednesday and Thursday evenings for filming, and then you might spend time over the weekend on editing and post-production. So looking at those time constraints, you may decide to publish one in-depth video a week on your channel. Additionally, you might have to take care of your own Siamese cat in the mornings, for instance, when you're feeding them. This could then be a part of your video content. But you have to allow for that time and consider that time and use that time. Now, remember, consistency is vital on YouTube. So it's essential to develop a content creation schedule that you can sustain over the long term. If you can't commit to a video per week, perhaps a bi-weekly schedule would work better for you where you put out a video once a fortnight. The key is to set a realistic schedule that matches the time you have available, maximize the amount of time you're going to make to be available, and then stick to that. Step six, create. Develop your basic digital product. The sixth step is to initiate the creation of your basic digital product. This entails mastering the tools and the software you're going to need to create the product seeking out every free training resource you can find at first, and then opting for comprehensive paid courses if you find your skills lacking in video editing, recording, audio, or filming, or any other part of the production process. Now, investing in a comprehensive course that teaches you from start to finish is often more time efficient than trying to piece together knowledge from random YouTube videos, unless, of course, those videos are structured like a course themselves. Some of that type of content does exist. Something else to consider is the power of artificial intelligence tools that are available today. These can substantially speed up productivity and product creation, ultimately saving you time and enhancing the quality of your products. Now, once your first video or product is ready, you want to release it to the world and then immediately begin working on the next one. And you want to ensure that each piece of content is a little bit better than the last one. Try to improve one tiny element in each video as it goes up each week. Now, it is crucial to understand that your objective is to create a body of work with your videos. If you're aiming to grow a YouTube channel, for instance, create a cluster of videos that interconnect as if they were chapters of a course. This is especially beneficial for educational content but it can be applied to all types of content. Think of it like a story for entertainment content or a series of updates for news content. Think of your videos as a set of videos that potential viewers can delve into. Focus on developing this repository of courses before you worry about monetizing them. Depending on the complexity of your area of expertise, you might need 10 videos or maybe 50 to cover the basics, depending on how complex the subjects are. You are essentially building your theme park, and you need to populate the theme park with lots of rides to attract and keep visitors. Once you have all the core rides in the park built, then you can start focusing on building roads to the park. A lot of that will take care of itself as you produce the videos. People start finding your village and start following as you build your village. And to illustrate this point, if you go to a theme park and there are two rides, will you enjoy it and will you remember it enough to want to go back there? Now, if you go to a theme park and there are 50 rides and you go on all those 50 rides, will you remember it enough to go back when a new ride comes out? Yes, of course you will. Focusing on the 50 rides first will enable you to focus on building out the channel and will keep you going through that difficult period where you don't seem to be getting much traction. And nearly all successful channels need about 50 good videos before they really take off. This is what happens to nearly every successful channel. They all had to build their content out first, and then one thing got picked up and went viral, and then all the previous videos that had hardly any views then also go viral. They rise on a rising tide. What's the point of going viral when your theme park only has two rides? If you do two videos, your third video goes viral, they're gonna come back and they've got two videos to watch. You're probably not monetized at this point, and you probably don't have products in place. Going viral early isn't necessarily beneficial. 
There's too much focus on going viral and not enough focus on YouTube, particularly on building that theme park of content. I learned this developing online courses. Courses sell best when they are in depth, condensed, and comprehensive. People want to go from beginner to master in a single course. They want to acquire all the knowledge they need in one go. And YouTube channels at work tend to have a very similar format. You will see they have videos on each key point to do with that area of interest, particularly education. So think of it like this. You're not creating a video about cats. You are creating a mini course about cats. And that will change your approach to making your content because you'll start to plan it out and link it. So let's have a look at an example of that. So you've decided to build a YouTube channel dedicated to Siamese cats. And now you're going to create your body of work, a series of interconnected videos that provide comprehensive knowledge about Siamese cats. So let's say we wanted to get our first five down. Here's a simple step-by-step -step approach we might use. First video, your introduction. This can be an overview of what your channel will cover. Discuss Siamese cats briefly, introduce yourself and set the expectations for your channel. Publish this video to establish your presence and share on social media. Second video, Siamese cats, history and traits. We're going to dive into more specifics about the breed. We're going to discuss their origin, distinctive features, and what makes them unique. And then we're going to go into our third video, which is diet and nutrition. In this video, we can focus on the dietary needs of Siamese cats, what foods to avoid, and some dietary tips and tricks for new owners. In our fourth video, we will talk about health and well-being, discuss common health issues that Siamese cats may face, prevention strategies, and the importance of regular vet checkups. In our fifth video, we might talk about training our Siamese cat. Here we share tips and tricks on training Siamese cats, their learning habits and techniques to handle their playful and somewhat mischievous behavior. Now, once you've created this initial body of work, You've laid the foundation of your channel and you're ready to expand and explore more specific topics or delve deeper into areas you have already introduced. And this leads us to step seven, diligence. Diligently implement your plan. The seventh and final step is to follow through on your plan with unwavering diligence. Committing to the process for the necessary two to five years and herein lies the real secret to success. Unfortunately, this is also where most people fail. They expect immediate results, and when those aren't forthcoming, they abandon the plan, they constantly shift strategies, chasing after every next shiny opportunity. I've seen this so many times over the years. People start something, then get distracted and move on. Here's a fundamental principle to bear in mind. Diligence and consistency in following a plan generates wealth, whereas hasty and frequent switches lead to failure and poverty. It's essential to adopt a long-term mindset and follow through on your plan with patience. While you may get lucky and experience some quick success, the typical journey involves a well-crafted plan, clear expectations, and a realistic timeline. All of that is driven by the engine of diligence. This mindset and approach will shield you from failure. Diligence is the most crucial trait to cultivate in business. Whenever a new opportunity comes online, I see a lot of people jump on it and then 12 months later, they're jumping onto the next trend and they're abandoning that. But the successful ones I've watched over the years and the principle I have used and applied and got success with is that you stay on that new opportunity. If it's good, is going to be good for a while. You develop it, you master it, and you make lots more money from it because you stick with it and you see it through to its logical conclusion and its real level of profitability. If you ask any successful entrepreneur, they will confirm this truth provided you're willing to listen. So an example of that is, let's say you have your YouTube channel for Siamese cat lovers up and running, posting your videos, engaging with your audience and doing all the right things. However, after a few months, you're not seeing the exponential growth you expected. It's easy to get disheartened and distracted, but this is where you have to double down. You might start thinking about pivoting your content to all cat breeds, not just Siamese. Or maybe you start thinking about a new channel, maybe about dogs, because you've heard that's a trending topic. This is where many people fail. 
They abandon their plans too soon and they start chasing that next shiny object. But remember, growing a YouTube channel, growing any form of residual income, any online digital business is a slow and steady process. Continue creating and improving your Siamese cat videos. Double down. Whenever you get tempted to give up, that's when you need to put more effort in. Keep engaging with your audience. Learn from your metrics. Be diligent in your efforts and stay committed to your niche. Listen to what your audience like and doesn't like. And don't forget to promote your long form content with short clips that drive people back to your main videos. So if you've got a big video and you find it's not growing as quickly as you want, you can take short clips of that video and share it all over the internet on all these social platforms and you can drive people back to the main video. This works particularly well with YouTube shorts because you can link directly back to the main video. Once it's made, it's promotable. Once it has value, don't just keep making content forever. You need to learn how to promote what you've got. So what you're going to do is test ideas for Siamese cat content as you go along, and you're going to keep going until you get to the end destination. And there you have it. Seven steps to help you launch your online business. Remember, every entrepreneurial journey starts with a single step. It's time to take yours. Good luck on your exciting new venture. Now, I hope you found this video useful. So drop a like and subscribe if you would like more content like this. And don't be afraid to ask any questions or let me know if you think I've got it all wrong. Now, if you're thinking of starting your own business, we have a free online marketing sales training course that has over 30,000 plus students and has a four and a half star rating. And that's going to help you get started with the marketing for your new business business. I'll put a link to that below and that's completely free. We also run the Business Buddies community, which has over 50 hours of training on all things entrepreneurial, and that can be accessed on the link below, as we mentioned before. Thank you for watching. I look forward to catching up with you in the next video.